coming up. So, and so there are different knights and ladies in the story with which we can identify ourselves with and which may be important in a certain stage of your life. Mm -hmm. So Percival, for example, is typically the knight who learns by trial and error. Mm -hmm. This is what we know in daily life. You do something, sometimes it works, sometimes it fails completely, and then you try to learn from that. Mm -hmm. And also within this, Percival, is to overcome old habits and conditionings that do not serve you any longer. That's another aspect of Percival. Okay. So the stories behind all these archetypes are extremely valuable and instructive. Hello, Synchronauts. How are you? Welcome to another Elysian Roundtable meeting with my dear friend and teacher, Mike Weiss from Circle of Avalon uh, up there in the Netherlands. How are you, dear Mike? Welcome. Very well. Thank you. And it's good to uh, do another session, another recording yes. here. Yes, we had a bit of uh, Very much. some bumps in the road in the past few weeks. That's why we couldn't a record and bring you this information but today exactly. uh happy equinox wherever you're looking at uh, at us uh, be for spring or for autumn uh, may it be a very blessed and a joy mm. joyful day for you and yours and so today we continue talking about um the second table right this is the second part right yeah <clears throat> yeah and from there because we ended at the second table, so we're going to move on also to the third one. Today. Okay, good. So yeah. uh, do you want me to begin sharing the presentation and then you can maybe give us a little bit of a recap? Very much, <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so here we are. So and... there we are. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm going to disappear from video for a moment because my internet connection is a bit... Uh wobbly but i will be here so okay so do you remember yeah. my, what we were talking about uh, in our last session what was going on <laughs> talking about the second table uh, i do i definitely do yes and um we used um one of the slides of the tree of life because we connect all the time the tree of life to the round table mythology so um, yeah, here we are. We have within, yeah, this one, just for our viewers and listeners, that you can see that within the Tree of Life, as far as everybody knows the diagram of the Kabbalah, we see three circles there. And the three circles are like the three tables. So first of all, we have looked at the lowest circle covering the lowest part of the Tree of Life, which is like the personal a sphere, sometimes called the sphere of action. So that is also our active way of participating within the world. And that is the table of Camelot. Um, so here it begins for everyone, not just in the myth, but also for us, is we start acting out and uh, we engage with the world very importantly. And the center of that circle is Yasot, as you can see with that moon, lunar crescent, image in it and uh, that's also our daily ego so that's the consciousness um, in which we um, perform our quest our daily adventures so to speak now and we have moved from there to the next middle circle and there we have another center called Tiferet in Kabbalah and that is the center of this sphere, which is the sphere of growth. So this is another uh, influence or another realm of consciousness, which simultaneously falls together with the lower circle, as you can see. So the yes, they are inter together. Uh -huh, interconnected, yes. Mm -hmm. Very good, exactly. So um, the ego consciousness, when we... Uh, develop inwardly on the quest 
we can also make a connection with our tiferet, which is the self. So that's not the ego, that's the self. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the sphere of growth. So here lies the potential and possibility to inwardly grow, psychologically grow, personally advance on the path. So the sphere of action has to come together with this sphere in order to really make progression on the spiritual path. So, and this is, the circle is called the table of uh, the grail. So the first circle was the table of Camelot, and then we have the table of the grail. Uh, so at the center, Tiferet, is also uh, appropriate, is the place of the grail itself. That means that's the place where you can receive, as a human being, as a soul, you can receive the grail. That means spirit. Um, and at the same time, we've talked about the king. So this is the archetype of the king within each and every one of us. This is the place of the king, which most of us may remember, I hope. <laughs> and uh, so what that means is you have taken your sovereignty back, your autonomy over your own life which in the lowest circle you can hardly do. So that's the archetype, the king, in a nutshell. So there we start to um, take matters into our own hands. So we start to uh, build up a spiritual life and make a spiritual kingdom of our own lives, not just an earthly kingdom in which we were born. So far, so good, Ida. Uh, well, I actually, I'm, I'm having a bit of problems. I, I missed a little bit of a part because my, I don't know why technology is not very happy with me right now. Um, but okay. uh, I hope that the recording will be uh, complete. And if not, then we, we can come back to that in another episode. But uh, I think that it's very clear good. to know that we begin uh, here below in this one. This is like, like our more earthly life when we are uh, just living like right. in an auto autopilot, no? On, in an automatic mode. And then when we start mm. having these questions, no? Like, who am I and why am I here? And what is my purpose? And we start moving up here, looking for that like central life, right. which is our inner king, no? And actually, I just want to move a little bit just for a Very moment, much. just to remember the image mm. that um, this, uh, this king has, no? In our case, obviously, mm. uh, or in the case of what we're discussing here, here and now, we are talking yeah. about King Arthur, right? Like he's he's the archetype of the yeah. king that we have. A, mm. that we are discussing in this in this uh, sense. So Arthur would yeah. take uh, the qualities of this uh, the Sephiroth, right? Of Tifaret. Yeah, the Sephiroth mm -hmm. there. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we yeah. should aspire and, to. Um, <clears throat> Huh? Just to exactly. move from our yes, and, uh, to our... yes, yeah, yes, exactly. And um, to do that, we, uh, like you said, we need to remind ourselves of um, our spiritual legacy, so to speak. So, where do you want to go, and how do you want to do that? And mm -hmm. we had, um, we made a code of arms to remind us. What is our symbol and motto to move out of the sphere of Yesop, so our daily consciousness with all our uh, conditionings, towards our self, so from the ego to the self. That's a part of the quest. It's, of course, not the whole quest, but that is important. Ah, here we have, more or less, that's what I was looking for, but obviously this is like another episode. So you guys, synchronous, <clears throat> go check it yeah. out when we talked about the coat of arms and coat of arms, which are two things that come together, but they're not the same. Uh, so mm -hmm. here we have like this um, image, no? That the um, the knight, we are the yeah. knights. We are out on our quest, so we can choose an image to represent our quest, no? What are we uh, looking for and, 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 and aiming for? And in a way, uh, yeah. now that we see this symbol, and it could change also. That's something that you taught us about, which is very interesting. And also, I wanted to mention yes. that, and it's really nice that that you came back to that because actually, like this this part of the tree, it actually looks kind of like a shield, which is where you would 
uh, put also yeah. one yeah. of the places where you could put your coat of arms. So this is very interesting that we need like, it would be like a guideline, no? Or like a, a something to mm. show us the way, where, where we want to go, what is the purpose of our, our, our quest. Yeah, and then we know is. where we, we exactly. want to move on, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, for the people who remember or know a little bit about their Kabbalah, um, that shield is a composition of Hod, which is the symbol, and Netzach, which is the motto or the battle mm -hmm. cry, so to speak. Okay. And indeed, um, it's a personal Yasonic image. So it's a reminder in daily life, what is my spiritual direction? And hmm. like you said, sometimes that changes because you change on the path, on the quest. Exactly. Yes. And um, <clears throat> so Arthur in Tiferet is not just an earthly king. He is supposed to be, and he is, a spiritual king. Hmm. So our King Arthur within ourselves is not going to just lead our earthly life only. No, it is a king in the self of our own psyche which has aspirations towards something more than just, you know, the establishment of a house and paying the mortgage and doing our social things, which is very important. But apart from that, we are building a spiritual kingdom around our own life. Mm -hmm. And that is the king. Now, there is an important thing here, which we have covered, but I think we should at least say it again, is that mm -hmm. the king has to marry with the queen. And the queen is Malkut, or in other words, he has to marry the kingdom or the land. So there's a sacred communion between king and queen. And that means that you have to come together within your body, which is the queen, Malkut, and the completeness of your own psychological life and we may think that well that's already done when you're born but it's not <laughs> so um, that blending together that unification is very important um, in spiritual work the queen cannot be uh, bypassed because she is actually the the kingdom itself Malkut, as you can see means kingdom Mm -hmm. And as it were, she needs to be like fertilized by the king. So, and of course, vice versa. So they need to come together in order to really come to a spiritual establishment there within ourselves. So these are metaphors for uh, a unification of uh, our body and that part of our psyche, the self. Well, and also something to note is that this doesn't mean, oh, because I was born a male or I'm a man or I identify as a man. That means mm -hmm. that I only am like the king. No, everybody or also like a woman. No, oh, I am the kingdom or I am the queen. No, we all have this yes. archetype, both feminine and masculine. So we have to do this inner work with both mm -hmm. energies. It's not just like yes. I... I am the queen and I need to, like in Disney movies, the old Disney movies where it would be like, oh, mm. I'm waiting for my Prince Charming to come and save me, no? Or guys would be, no, I have to look for my Cinderella mm. to clean my castle. <laughs> no, it's not yeah. like that. It's more like I find these qualities within me and I bring peace to my mm. like more human side, my 3D aspects with my spiritual side with my higher aspirations. Yes. But most people, especially right now in the world with the state of things, most people are very much mm. uh, stuck within the kingdom or even just the uh, this the hall of the mirrors as as you have told us before, not here in Yesod. Like yes. we're all very confused. Yeah. We're living yeah. as like zombies or living a, a by inertia, mm. so to speak. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. this is incredible. Reflection. Oh. Yeah. yeah, just showing off of each other, but instead of showing the best of each other, we keep showing the worst mm. of each other, and then we bounce off of, of each other. And mm. I mean, it's 
it's really more than the yeah. just a hall of mirrors. I would say like a, it's a madhouse right now and it's on fire because there's so much. <laughs> well, sometimes you, you can say that, but it, it has <laughs> never been anything else than this. And, you know, in that lower sphere with yes up there, that's the, the, um, the seat of, uh, of enchantment within the forest of enchantment in the mm. myth. So we are living in daily life in a forest of enchantment. And that's just the way it is. Um, and the spiritual growth is about uh, uncovering what that enchantment is. We are under a collective and personal spell here. And, uh, you know, can we just uh, unveil that particular spell on our lives? And um, then we don't have to discredit the forest itself, you see. But no, it, it, it has a purpose. Whole... Definitely. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's and for sure. What you, what you also rightly said is that, like king and queen, but there are other archetypes as well, uh, instead of seeing them as stereotypes, they are mm -hmm. archetypes. It means they that's are. That's a big difference. You know, yes. They are, you exactly. They are universal. Yeah. The difference between a stereotype and an archetype, so that people who have no idea, mm. like they understand, because there yes. is a big between one and the other there are yeah mm. exactly so uh, yeah like you said it's the masculine and feminine principle in the psyche in all of us and therefore mm -hmm. you know again the queen is the representative of the kingdom so that's your physical body and she is the ultimate receptacle or vehicle for the whole work mm -hmm. this is the temple of the holy spirit she is the sophia she is the wisdom, um, and eventually she is the physical grail. Here, within this, you receive the whole of the influence of the higher worlds, eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can say that the castle of Camelot is the queen in a metaphor, you see? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so that's where everything comes together again and again with all the meetings within Camelot. Um, and the king itself um, actually serves the queen. He mm -hmm. serves the wisdom. He serves the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important quality there. Um, yeah. So we have to be, we have to have a good perspective about these archetypes and find them within us, what they are telling us, mm -hmm. uh, and not be confused with the gender between the male and the female. That has nothing no. to do with it here. That, that's yeah. the thing that uh, an archetype goes beyond. But what is exactly the difference between the, a stereotype and an archetype? I don't know if you could just point us out uh, into that direction. Like, what is a, well, a stereotype? and So that we don't confuse them. What is a stereotype and what is an archetype? Yeah, well, stereotypes are actually much more personal. Uh, so that's an agreement that we have made about um, the typification, so to speak, of mm -hmm. uh, different personalities. Uh, but archetypes are not of a personal nature. They are of a uh, universal nature. They come from the collective unconscious, as Jung would say. Um, so they are universal. That's why they are applicable to uh, much more than just the personal life. Okay. You see, they are, they are actually... Um, beyond it but at the same time they are included within the personal life and stereotypes are just personal reflections of um, certain qualifications that we have made in life so you know the stereotype of the policeman or the judge or the mother or the father mm -hmm. more yes. like roles no that we play in role in models society. yes exactly like... Yeah, and archetypes yeah. are more more like um, more not even guidelines, but it's it's more like uh, yes, because an archetype includes not only your role in society but also part of your identity or your reason to be. No, very much. And archetypes, uh, where the word comes from, archi means ancient or very old. So they mm. are images that contain spiritual ideas stereotypes are personal archetypes hold ancient metaphysical spiritual 
principles and ideas. So they are of the higher worlds, stereotypes all, of the Monday. Yeah, and we can all uh, connect to that. And, and it doesn't matter which part of the world you're living in or what times, it, you can connect yes. with an archetype because they are universal. They go beyond time and space. And also something very interesting, and we're going to be doing mm -hmm. a special episode next week, by the way, talking about the hero's journey, because this is uh, very important to understand yes, uh, the archetypes, which archetypes we are connecting to. And for me, and I've, I've mm -hmm. tell about it like all the time, I know, and people might get tired of me speaking about Star Wars, but I don't care. Or in your case, you like a lot, for example, Lord of the Rings. We see the same archetypes, and mm -hmm. that's why when you read a book or you go to the movies, uh, we get so invested in these stories because they make sense to us. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. yes, I recognize myself in this character in that movie because they are yes. based on these principles of archetypes that uh, Joseph Campbell has very well defined in his book, uh -huh. A Hero of a Thousand Faces. And then, for example, George Lucas applied that to Star Wars. But other authors or other uh, creators mm. have integrated those uh, in a very successful way. Same thing with Harry Potter, for example, and, and so many exactly. others. Exactly, yeah. And we can apply those principles to our lives. And, and you teach that as well, right, Mike? Yeah, well, that's the whole idea behind the round table and Kabbalah. But in order to be able to write a book like that, you know, like Tolkien did, or uh, the Harry Potter example, or Star Wars, you really need to have at least unconsciously, but preferably consciously, knowledge about the archetypal world and the psychology behind it. Um, yeah. But having said it, you know, it, it is deeply ingrained within the collective unconscious of humanity. We all know these stories because all cultures have them, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, they all have a story about the hero or about the king and the queen and the kingdom. Yes. So, but the beauty uh, again of the round table myth and the grail is it is packed with archetypal symbolism. So it speaks to people all over the world. I mean, look at yourself. You're from Mexico, and people I know from Japan or South Africa or you know South America, they all relate to this story because yes. it's universal. It's not just limited to uh, a cultural structure. And that's mm -hmm. the beauty of it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. So, I don't know if you want to continue where we just left yes. off. Yes. <laughs> yeah. where, where, which slide do you want to go to? <laughs> uh, well, let's see. Because if we want to uh, go a little bit from the king and the queen, to see yeah here this is the third circle yeah ah, okay so let's circle. go back to the yeah so let's go back here just yeah. to show the circle uh-huh exactly yeah so again the second circle it um interlaces with the uh the, the second first. circle with the third circle and uh, that third circle is called the sphere of transformation so you have the sphere of action, well, then of growth, and then of transformation. So growth is something that you may experience as a progression, but you can still fall back on old conditionings, old habits, and everything. And you thought you were there, and then all of a sudden, unfortunately, you find out that doesn't happen as something is transformed. So completely changed form in an essential way and mm -hmm. you will know it in your own experience and consciousness when something is being transformed because it's of this highest sphere of awareness and consciousness um well there's one thing about this we can hardly or very difficult it's very difficult to initiate transformation on ourselves so that's a matter of Let's say grace, if things truly transform, it's not because our effort has made it so, but be because we have um, devoted and delivered ourselves to the quest. Yeah. 
and that is one of the duties of the king. So the king serves the queen, and upwards it serves the higher worlds. Mm. So it the king is like a doorway between, like Christ, between the world and the upper part of the tree or heaven or God. Right. Mm. So a, a transformation can only happen when the appropriate work is done inside of the world and we are open or devoted towards the higher worlds, as we say in Kabbalah. And then transformation can happen. So it's called the upper circle, the sphere of transformation. And it's the table of the last supper. And this may be exactly, this may be for our uh, companions here listening and looking at our podcast, a bit of a strange uh, leap in inside our Arthurian mythos, because how do we get from the round table and King Arthur and everything, a Celtic Anglo-Saxon myth to, you know, this Christian idea? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to highlight that briefly, um, in the Middle Ages, there have been the great poets of the Arthurian mythos, like Chrétien de Troyes, is a very important writer in those days. So if you're interested in everybody who is listening, uh, very interesting texts. And he referred already in the Middle Ages to the Crusades and to all the stories that came back to Europe about this, well, very special teacher. And a, a man after that, Robert de Boron, he wrote also about Christ and also about Joseph of Arimathea, bringing a very special cup, a cup of transformation or the cup of Christ with him to the West, maybe to the to England. We don't know historically, but mm -hmm. this is how this symbolism came to some of the stories within the Grail. And I like to cross fertilize them all together because they have all their spiritual value and their teaching within it. So um, this is the table of transformation, not just from a Christian perspective, but from an esoteric perspective. Because here is where, again, look at, at Christ here, Yeshua, he holds the wafer. That's the symbol of the queen, which is Malchut. Of course. And yes. Yes. Um, she is, you know, the physical manifestation. And she has to come together with the spiritual aspect of the king. So the blood and water of Christ have to come together with the host, which is the queen. And this is this process, this alchemical process, so to speak, is coming together inside this vessel, which is the Holy Grail. Now, this is the process or the ritual of, um, of this particular table. Okay. So this is in the myth of the round table where the seeker eventually not only finds the grail, but also engages with it. That means he or she has found the grail and can really say, I have experienced it and it is within me. Mm -hmm. I am part of it. And through it, I experience the union with the world. It's not just my experience, but through it, I experience what it means to be with spirit. And that's why this circle of transformation at the center is called Da'at, which is the sacred union. Yeah, thank you, Aida. Mm -hmm. Da'at, you say it's knowledge and it means spiritual knowledge. So there you have the direct experience of what it means to engage with spirit or it engages with you, whatever you like. But 
So the grail now is not just the object of seeking, but here you have come um, in proximity or in union with it. And through it, you will experience a transformation. And that is a very subjective process. Nobody can tell you what you will experience. No, it will be different for everybody. It's never exactly. the same because we're all different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that brings us to a very important point in the Western esoteric tradition. Our mm -hmm. quest is personal and subjective. Yes. And from the Kabbalah, it is said that whatever you experience is actually the spirit that experiences itself through you. So there can be no, you know, uh, theological discussion about it. What you experience is God experiencing itself through us. Yes. And, uh, well, in some traditions, of course, that's blasphemy. But for <laughs> for us in Kabbalah, and mysticism, that's, that's, and the grail. That's what I was thinking. Like, uh, we would be, like, if these were other times, we would be burning at the stake right now by saying this thing. Yeah, this would be our last podcast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And then yes. everything will be erased. But it's just that I think the problem with uh, with many religions, and I say this, like, this is my personal point of view, as somebody who was raised as a Catholic, no? Uh, in a very Catholic <laughs> country, as is Mexico, and pagan at the same time, which is beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. We get lost, like we, we, uh, we lose the forest for the trees. Uh, sometimes people want to take everything so literally that and but this is interesting because also the texts and the information has been uh, yes. kind of like cryptic in such a way because not everybody is ready to experience or understand this this kind of knowledge you need to have a certain uh, path already trodden or you have to have some experience mm -hmm. before you can access to this uh, information and sure. actually for example i know that in the past a uh, kabbalah for example was only available for men and they had to be men over 40 years old because you had to have a certain um, experience yes. uh, of life before you could access to this no so mm. but now the times have yes. changed obviously and the reality mm -hmm. is very yeah. different and I think that we are at a tipping point in the growth of consciousness and also the awakening of many souls, like many souls have incarnated right now mm. to experience yeah. a change in the times, in the eras. Now we're entering the age of Aquarius and so many things are going on in the sky right now, astrologically speaking. Yeah. But this is because now is a time to bring this information to other people and Obviously, many people are still behind in those uh, ideas that, every, no, it's like this is a literal thing and we have to take it literally. And you mm. have to see that, no, these stories are archetypal. These stories have more behind what they are mm. saying. It's not that mm. wine is blood or that, as you were saying, like you just said that and it makes a lot of sense to me now. The breath that Jesus is sharing it's the fruit of the earth. Yes. So, of course, uh, that's Malkut. Uh, yes. It's so obvious. But if you don't have the references, yeah. you yeah. take things literally, and then you lose so many uh, yes. important yeah. pearls of wisdom. So the work that you're yes. doing, you ask me personally, the work that you're doing right now, which is, as you're saying, you mm -hmm. are amalgamating all of these different traditions because they all have these topics in common but it's like a big jigsaw puzzle and they all bring different pieces of the puzzle and what we're doing here in these round tables is bringing those pieces together so that people who are looking for this information because as you said i'm in mexico but there's so many people in other parts of the world resonating with this yes. information but they have no means to access that so we're providing this mm. space and trying to um, translate a little bit, you know, so to speak, like make it more understandable and, and just like, hey, pay attention. Like, yes, don't go and take things literally as our forefathers did mm. or as many people still do, because then 
you're just going to be living at the at a certain level of, as you were saying, no, like the whole of the mirrors here or the forest of enchantment, mm. which is okay. We'll have different levels to go through. But if you're really looking, yeah. if you're in, in your own quest, then you have to look uh, beyond what is presented as, as originally what you see. What you see is not what you get. There's more mm. behind that. And yes, we would be called yes, uh, blasphemous exactly. and heathens and God knows what else, no? By all of these groups. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. But, no, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, because sometimes we just regurgitate what we are taught in school, in our communities, mm. no? And we don't stop and think. Yeah. But when you stop and think and you see these connections, it's like, oh my God, this is so interesting. No? What, mm. what else is there? Well, and and it is at, at, the, at the stage, yeah, at the stage of the king in Tiferet that we mm. start to be conscious of this particular fact, this perce perception that you are talking about. Then you can see uh, the written traditions of the world are are fine they're beautiful you know all the holy books and all the scriptures and what have you and we have the oral tradition that's also beautiful but mm. then how do we apply it? because the written and oral traditions should only serve one purpose and that's how to get to the source and if we are um if we have lost the purpose of the books and the oral tradition of the teachers um mm. then we are in trouble and that happens sometimes, for example, with the ritual we're just talking about, the Last Supper or the Eucharist. If the symbolism is lost and the meaning is lost, then it becomes a social gathering. Yeah. You know, like a meal without mm. it to transmit, which is... And into the realization of what it really is, and which is spirit. So what Christ came to do is to make us Christ, not to make us Christians, as it is said. So and that is, and a that big is really yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the union with the grail in in the mythology of, of the round table. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the union with the grail is the union with Christ. Because in Kabbalistic terms, the grail is the Shekhinah, which made Yeheshua Christ. I hope mm. that this is not too cryptic or too abstract. Um, but the phases through the tree of life, through those circles, makes you a grail seeker first. Then mm -hmm. you have knowledge of the the grail you become a grail bearer mm. and if you are more and more uh experienced in that third circle you become a grail guardian mm -hmm. it means you are always within the presence of the the grail itself so always in the presence of spirit maybe not consciously but at least unconsciously, the spirit is always with you. Wow. So there's a beautiful picture here. Yeah. A suggestive picture about uh, the grail guardians or the kings of, uh, of the grail. Here within the grail castle. And um, the idea in the story is which is sometimes maybe a bit of a difficult thing within the symbolism, is that the seeker should actually try to visit or find the Grail Castle, which is most of the time on an island, um, mm. to or replace the old Grail King or to have a different function. Um, but we all have a particular fate when we... Um, encounter the old grail king which is the mm -hmm. old authority within you okay now what you see here is in red is the grail seeker percival mm -hmm. and he finally as the, the myth goes 
has asked the question when he saw the grail in the grail castle you know who does the grail serve that's what it says in the mythology in mm. other words uh, in the in the presence of the grail king who is wounded that's how, what the, the the king is called the maimed king or the wounded king um and can only be restored in the presence of the grail seeker who sees the grail and then comes up with the right question about it mm. and and this is something for our listeners if any moment in your life in meditation but it can happen in daily life you uh are in the presence of spirit it can be in nature or it can be in a conversation with a person it doesn't matter that don't let it pass by but consciously engage with it mm. you know don't fall asleep like Percival did but engage with the moment and with the experience itself mm. because spirit introduces itself or presents itself to you because that is the right moment for you if we do not understand this then the moment is lost exactly yeah but percival learned as we, we all have to do one day that i have to be vigilant and at the moment that i feel the spirit is near i have to engage with it and ask the right question sit with it exactly. so and then in the case of first of all he transforms from a seeker and a grail bearer into the new king okay wow so he becomes the grail king itself the grail king is no longer wounded and withers away and dies he's released of its old old task so to speak wow well, the old king is a part of you and me. So this is a metaphor. It's actually the part of the king that we are not aware of. And it can go. And now the new king is conscious of being a grail guide. So that's an important part of this picture. Hmm. I don't I have know if you have any yeah sure. i do yeah. of course i do huh? <laughs> um because you, you were saying you're just to try to understand I'm, I'm trying to wrap my my head around this um because you were saying like when yeah. this happens it's it's not so much about how much work you've done no mm -hmm. i mean it has to do a little bit because obviously when you do inner work and etc then you become the correct re receptacle or the right vessel <laughs> for spirit and it yes. takes work to do that yes a lot of work and it's painful yeah. and it's horrible mm. and some days you want to die but others you're full of joy and happiness mm. like it's like a roller coaster ride no but at the same time like Definitely. you could do yeah. all the work yeah. it's like you go to the gym and you flex all the mu muscles and whatever but uh, you need an extra something to move into that direction mm. it's not only your effort but there has to be also like spirit like you elevate yourself to spirit but until spirit says you're ready to receive it then you will it's not like okay i did all the exercises i woke up early i know i meditated i prayed i whatever i gave money to the poor yeah. no and okay yeah. here's my list no can i get into heaven now it's not like that precisely it's, it's more like at some point uh, you just have to be there present and when the time is right, it will come to you. But you have to do work as well. So it's a, mi a mixture of both. It's not just one or the other. It is, yes. Well, okay. it is what Christ said. One important thing about this. He hmm. said, you know, to Thomas, the kingdom of heaven will not come by expectation. And that is one of the things that was sometimes um, a disappointment to some of the seekers. Um and the myth is very clear about it because yeah. some of the seekers found the Grail Castle, could not enter it because sometimes the Grail Castle was just, you know, you, could, you couldn't enter it for some reason. And they tried to find it again at the same place, but it wasn't there. Yeah. 
So it can be in your back garden, the Grail Castle, or it can mm -hmm. be anywhere in the world. But of course, it's not the physical place. It's a psychological yeah. place that you have to refine. And it doesn't come by expectations. So the miracle, you know, has mm -hmm. to unfold on its own terms. The only thing, like you said, what we can do is to prepare ourselves spiritually and psychologically and then just trust that the higher worlds will present itself, uh, you know, in a form of a castle, so to speak, a vessel in which we will find a spirit. Yeah. That's exactly it. Um, and sometimes that is uh, beautiful also about the story of Percival. The trust isn't there. And then he is in big psychological trouble. <laughs> Where have I seen that before? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm. But uh, there are other knights who present to us a different motive, like Galahad, uh, mm. one of the, the, the knights who we saw on horseback on one of the other pictures. Um, okay. He presents to us an other archetype. Ah. Uh, okay. Namely, uh, the, the so called perfect knight. So here we have the Grail unveiled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Galahad. Uh, he is the son of Lancelot. Mm -hmm. And he is like kind of a Christ figure. He is perfect. I mean, physically, psychologically. Just um, look at him. Look at him. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, even even the spirits want him there. Um, and um, they say about him, since he was born, the only thing he knew and remembered that he was from God. And that says enough. Yeah. So he hardly had to fight any time in his life because people surrendered unto him naturally, to his mm -hmm. inner power and serenity. Mm -hmm. Um. So uh, he he his way towards the Grail was hardly a seeking, because the Grail was already in him. Yeah. Okay. So that's different from the life of Percival. We can probably ourselves with very easily. Mm -hmm. So, and so there are different knights and ladies in the story with which we can identify ourselves with and which may be important in a certain stage of your life mm -hmm. so percival for example is typically the knight who learns by trial and error mm -hmm. this is what we know in daily life you do something sometimes it works sometimes it fails completely and then you try to learn from that mm -hmm. And also within this principle is to overcome old habits and conditionings that do not serve you any longer. That's another aspect of principle. Okay. So the stories behind all these archetypes are extremely valuable and instructive. Wow. That's very, very interesting. And there are um... other examples. Uh, I'm sorry. Do you, I don't know if you have more time, uh, Mike? Because I'm just looking at. I have. I have, to be I have a little bit more time if you. If okay. You, yeah, yeah. Sure. Just I don't know if there's anything else you want to uh, share with us, and then because obviously we will have to continue this conversation. There's still more to cover about this transition between uh, the oh, second yes, and definitely. third table. So I don't know if if there's. A, do you want to stay in this slide, or do you want me to move to another slide? Well, I think um, if we go to the slides that um, with the knight kneeling. This one? Uh, uh, no, a little bit further down, I think. This one, yeah. Yeah, okay, all right. Well, this is a nice picture, and it says a lot about um, the approach or the attitude from the, the second circle of the Grail King to that third circle of transformation. And this is a gesture of 
yielding, they say sometimes within the mythology, uh, that is like surrender. So you start to know that your quest is not in service only of you as a person, but much more in service of something greater. So your life is not only a matter of fate, but also of destiny. You came mm -hmm. to do something important here, which is unique for your individual presence here on earth. And whatever that is, it can be, you know, being a mother or a father or a teacher or a good doctor. Uh, it may not be a profession at all, uh, but there is something for everyone. And to live that, and also maybe to share it with others, that is living your fate and destiny eventually. Uh, and to consciously discover this will bring you to a state of humility, humbleness, or yielding. You surrender your life unto something greater. And that is the inner attitude towards that third circle of transformation. And of course, the great example in this is Yeheshua from that table of transformation. Mm. His life didn't mean a thing to him. You know, he yeah. said, I and the Father are one. And I serve uh, that greater knowledge or that wisdom that comes from the Father. Uh, mm -hmm. And the Father, of course, is just another name for the highest source. Mm-hmm. And um, so this is the, the inner stature towards going psychologically from the self a greater call. This devakut, which means devotion. Okay, there it is. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, sorry about that. I'm having some technical difficulties, <laughs> uh, but uh, we're back. So um, you were saying about... Um, it's a part of the, the quest. You were talking about the Devekut. Uh -huh. like... Yes, exactly. So uh -huh. I was just saying that Devekut in Kabbalah is another way for devotion. Uh -huh. And... A way of describing it is David, they call it the cleaving unto God. Or as soon as you have an experience of the grail, um, you do not try to possess it and to claim it, but you try to embrace the experience and to cultivate it within yourself. That's difficult. Okay. So instead of that, it is only a state of consciousness. It becomes mm -hmm. a stage of consciousness or a prolonged state. So that it's always with you. And then it becomes, then the grail becomes something inside of you. You become a grail bearer. You are always, you know, taking it with you. That's, of course, again, a metaphor <laughs> that you mm -hmm. and that spiritual consciousness are one and the same thing. Or at least becoming one and the same thing, you see? Yeah, which we, so we that's, already that's have, difficult. but we forgot because we are very down in density. Yeah. So this is just a way of remembrance, no? Yeah, that's that's the that's the memory of the Garden of Eden. Mm. That's where you were always in unity with the Holy Spirit. You know, Adam and Eve were one and the same being. Now mm -hmm. we live in separation. Yeah. And that's what makes this life a quest. Looking again mm. for the wholeness within the diversion and the separation. That's exactly it. Um, and the whole uh, mystery behind it is, which we mm -hmm. can find in Kabbalah and in the teachings of Christ and within the round table, is that the whole um, defining again of Eden is here and now. So it's not somewhere else. 
but it has to be found or refound through your experiences. It's a spiritual, psycho-spiritual revelation eventually. You don't have to die for it. <laughs> it's it's here and now in potential. Hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Wow. This is yeah. incredible. Uh, we will have to continue this conversation definitely because there is more to explore we will. About the third uh, table. But we're going to be doing a special um, program for next next week. So can you tell us a little bit more of, of, about what we're going to talk about and why we're doing it? Yes, definitely. Well, it's very much related, of course, to the whole round table idea and also to Kabbalah. But mm -hmm. uh, this is an idea coming from Joseph Campbell, which you briefly mentioned in, uh, in this session of ours. Uh, a doctor in uh, mythology, a professor in mythology, and he came up with this simple diagram of a circle and in the circle are th certain symbols and things written. And that signifies and depicts the spiritual quest of the human soul. And um, I love to talk about it because it's quite simple, very um, easy to understand. Uh, and so it will support, I think, everyone who will listen to it. And at the same time, um, yeah, also nice to mention, but we will do that next week. Is I'm going to give a course on that two day course in the UK soon in May. Uh, so this will be like a, a foretaste of what I'm going to do there. Um, but again, I think it will cross fertilize uh, what we are doing here with our sessions, with the podcast of the Roundtable and uh, Kabbalah. Exactly. So this is a good opportunity, Synchronauts, wherever you're listening, if you can go to the UK to be present, uh, to receive these teachings uh, from Mike directly. So you're gonna, have, but you're gonna have other uh, activities, no? So you're gonna be going to the UK at least twice this year. I'm Am going to correct? go twice, exactly. So uh -huh. on the twenty second, twenty third of May, that's on the Monday, Tuesday. I will be in Hawkwood College. There, we'll have to, uh, we'll, we'll gather to do this uh, uh -huh. hero's journey, and uh, I will return to the UK on the first, second, and third of September for a Kabbalistic retreat also in Hawkwood College. Okay. So there will be other things. Huh? But I no, will no. I will uh, I will mention that another time. Yeah. Yeah. So if people want to contact you, Mike, to have more information about your teachings, your books as well, which are really good. Yeah. And writing another book by the way, which is really, really great for the beginner Kabbalist. So if people want Thank to know you. more about your activities or if they want to contact you, how can they contact you? Well, first of all, uh, easiest is uh, email. So that's my full name, uh, Mike Weiss, and then at rocketmail.com. Uh, another way, of course, is uh, through uh, Facebook. You can find me there under the same name, Mike Weiss or Circle of Avalon. And you can send me a messenger um, message or whatever you want to do there, um, a personal message. And that's the most easiest, probably. Yeah. Okay, very good. Or also you can leave us some comments here. Uh, I'm uploading these videos on YouTube and also on Facebook, on the Facebook of Mexican Melot. So if you want to uh, write any comments, are you liking what we're doing? If you have any questions, any other topics that you would like Mike uh, to talk about, please leave your comments yes. here. If you're watching on YouTube, remember to like and subscribe and click on the little bell so that every time we have a new video, then you can come and see what we're doing. And also on Facebook, like and share. So thank you so much, Mike, for uh, today's session. It's very interesting. And I'm really looking forward to talk about um, the hero's journey next week and uh, what you have to tell us about it. Who knew that there were so many spiritual connections, no? With things that seem so, ah, these are just stories and mythology. No, there are things there to be, um, to be taken advantage of in our spiritual growth and in our paths of, of a finding a, well, wellness, well-being and coming back to oneness as you very well teach in your mm -hmm. Kabbalah. Uh, 
groups and in yes. your books. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. Excellent. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it very much. Yeah, me too. So thank you, Synchronauts. Thank you, dear Mike. So we'll see each other very soon. In the meantime, take care. And, eh, well, just be Good. ready for the next surprise. Bye. Uh -huh. Thank you.